So, it's now been 60 days since I finished my 30-day experiment of posting one video every day. And for those of you who have been following along, you know that I started this experiment with the goal of getting my ad revenue from the $300 that it was up to hopefully $1,000. And if you watched the last video in my 30-day series, you're already aware that I did not meet this goal. However, as you can see here, since I stopped posting every day, things have changed a bit. So in this video, I'll give an update on my analytics and do so in a way that's similar to my previous updates. I'll also talk about how one of my older videos went viral and got 4.2 million views. I also want to go back and review how some of these videos performed over the long term. And I also want to review how some of my viewer stats have changed. So once again, here you can see my analytics over the past 90 days. So for this 30 day period here, I was posting one long form video every day. And over here was when I stopped. And since then, I've been doing one short form video and one live stream every week. Now, as you can see here, there's a massive increase in views shortly after I stopped posting every day. And this increase here is almost exclusively from a single video that I posted a couple years ago. And that video is this one, the how to make a CPU video. And I find it quite interesting to look at the growth curve of this video. Originally, I had this video linked in a blog post. As soon as I posted the blog post, it did very well. And that's where the initial views on the video came from. Now, over time, the views were pretty flat. And I think it was about a year after I posted this video that I decided to change the thumbnail and title. I originally had the idea for this video back when the global chip shortage was a thing. So I think the original title was Man Solves Global Chip Shortage in 99 Seconds. And the thumbnail was a different scene from the video. It was one with me shining the flashlight through the photo mask. Since it had that title and thumbnail for about a year without going viral, I figured it can't hurt to try and change it. In hindsight, it's a bit difficult to tell how big of a difference the different title and thumbnail makes, especially since it didn't really seem to change anything. And it seems like the main thing that made it go viral was just the fact that I was posting more videos. In total, this video made four and a half thousand dollars. Now if I take a look at where my revenue comes from over the last 28 days, and see which videos are actually generating most of the revenue, you can see here that the how to make a CPU video is almost 90% of the revenue, and the next highest video is only 1%, and after that it really trails off. You can also see here that my awk command video is only accounting for 0.7% of the revenue. And in one of my previous analytics update videos, that number there was 80%. So it seems like despite my best efforts, it's difficult to diversify your revenue across a number of different videos. And at least in my case, it seems like almost all of the revenue always comes from the currently trending video. I mentioned in one of my other videos that I think YouTube does this intentionally, because it would probably save them a lot of money in caching. Now it's also interesting that the second highest revenue video in this table only has 19 views, but it made $10. And I think that's mostly from a single channel membership. And as a result, that gives a crazy high RPM. And it looks like a few other videos have the same pattern. So given the fact that the top revenue videos have such wildly varying RPMs, it's difficult to glean any insights from this. Okay, now let's take a look at the analytics from the shorts videos. So these are the numbers over the last 90 days. And as you can see, the metrics for the shorts videos are pretty much all down. And this is despite the fact that I've actually been putting more work into the shorts videos recently. And another interesting way to look at the shorts is to compare the revenue breakdown from shorts versus the long form video. So as you can see here, the shorts videos account for less than 1% of the revenue compared to the revenue from the long form. And if you compare that to the live, even the live content makes more money than the shorts. And the live content I put almost no work into. So now let's do a comparison to see how the RPM has changed since this uh, March 8th update. So here you can see that the RPM has gone down to $1.18. And I think that's mostly due to the fact that this single video is where pretty much all the views come from. And since this video is so short, it doesn't really get a lot of ad revenue. So now let's look at some of the long-term performance of videos that I posted a while ago. So this is a video that I posted just before my 30-day experiment. You can see that on any average day, it makes only a couple cents. And we've got one day here with 15 cents. And this video here was the first video in the 30-day series. Now when I first started this series, I calculated that I would need around 15,000 views on each of the videos in order to meet my $1,000 goal. And as you can see here, most of these videos fall quite short of that. If I take a look at the analytics for this one, you can see that almost all of the views come in the first few days. But after that, it really flattens out. And if I take a look at revenue, 28 days, you can see that this one makes almost nothing. But it looks like yesterday it made 386. So it looks like that jump must have been from a new channel member yesterday. If I look at the next day's video, this is the worst performing one in the entire batch. Once again, most of the views are from the first couple days, and then it flattens out. And for revenue, so this one is also basically at nothing. But again, I guess by coincidence, it just jumped up yesterday. And I guess that was also from a new channel member. Now let's look at the third day's video. Once again, same flattening out pattern. So this one is a lot like the other ones, pretty much at zero every day, and then three cents one day. 
Now, I won't go through every video here, but I'll try to pick out a few interesting ones. So this one I think is interesting because it's not a very good video. Just after I posted this one, I lost 4 subscribers, and the views were also quite low. If I check out the revenue, and unsurprisingly, this video only has 1 cent in revenue and 9 views over the last 28 days. So the first video in the series that started to get a meaningful amount of views was this one. This right here is about half of my 15,000 view goal, and of course this one has the same pattern of flattening off. The overall revenue from this one is fairly good. The RPM for this video is $3, which is better than the $2 that I was estimating with. And if I look at the last 28 days of revenue, you can see that it's pretty much stuck around 1 or 0 cents. Now if I take a look at one of the business videos that has substantially less views, this one has made $6 in total. And once again, the revenue is pretty flat. Now let's take a look at one of the videos that performed a lot better. So this one about regular expressions that I think a lot of people are related to. And even though this video is flattening off, it's still getting a few views. And the revenue for this one is twice what my goal was, but of course this is still not enough to make up for all the other poor performing videos. Looking at the daily revenue for this video, you can see it hovers between 0 and 5 cents. Now let's take a look at this video about my block mining game. So this video is interesting to me, because it was very easy to create this video. So it's made 8 bucks so far, and revenue in the last 28 days is nothing spectacular. And it's overall pretty typical compared to the other videos in this series. And for the next one, let's take a look at this video on the man pages. So this video here achieved my 15,000 view goal, and it exceeded the revenue goal, and it's still getting a few views, and the last 28 days of revenue is pretty typical, and one of the videos that I've noticed that seems to still be accumulating views, which you can see here from this graph, it's still trending up, is the why I rejected my NVIDIA job offer video. Now in hindsight, I really wish I had filmed this with a better camera angle, but that's what happens when you're on a tight deadline. So this one only has 8.8k views, but it's already almost at the $30 revenue threshold. And if I look at the last 28 days of revenue, you can see that it's averaging something closer to around 10 cents or so. So that's not too bad. If I had a few hundred videos like this, then I'd be doing pretty good. So now let's take a look at what the audience is actually watching. So I checked back in one of my earlier analytics update videos, and this number here was 14%. And I suppose that's not too surprising, because recently, most of my views have been coming from that one video on how to make a CPU. And if I look at the comparison for videos and live, it's even lower than that. And for shorts and live, it's at 2%. So that's actually quite interesting. It means that probably almost none of the people who watch my videos are even aware that I live stream. Or I guess it could also mean that they are aware, but they really don't like my live streams. And I suppose that's another interesting thing to review. So I've noticed that almost every time I do a live stream, I actually lose subscribers. And overall, I think that's fine. I don't really consider that a deterrence. I would expect that most people who really like the content, if they check out a live stream and they don't really like it, they'd probably just click off it. But I think that if you click on my live streams, and you're sufficiently motivated enough to unsubscribe, then you probably shouldn't be subscribed. Ultimately, I think that success in this social media thing is going to require mastering all the different formats. Okay, now let's take a look at some other revenue sources. So for channel memberships, I'm up to 20 members now, and that brings in $50. And on Patreon, I'm currently at $150 a month. So together, that's a nice $200 cushion. And another small source of revenue has been my online store. I think in total I've made about $300 in sales so far. And I almost forgot to do an update on the current ad revenue. So during the month that my how to make a CPU video is trending, I made 3500 And of course since I haven't posted any long form videos in quite a while, my revenue for this month is on track to be down quite a bit. So looking at these numbers here, I'd say it's on track to be about $300 in ad revenue for this month. So in terms of overall conclusions here, I would say there's definitely some kind of smoothing effect in the YouTube algorithm. I suspect that posting this burst of 30 videos gave the YouTube algorithm the confidence that my channel can actually support a certain viewer rate. And since I posted so many videos so quickly, it just decided to take an older video that it had a lot of confidence about and start that one to be trending. And I suspect that if I posted a lot more videos like these ones, the YouTube algorithm would probably select one of these ones to start trending. So I mentioned before on my live stream that I'm definitely going to slow down on the Linux command line shorts videos. This has been a fun series to produce, but as you've seen from the numbers, these videos don't bring in a lot of money. So I'm going to take the time that I would have used to produce those shorts and invest that in long form content. And I'm going to try to continue doing the live streaming. The amount of work it takes to do a live stream is much less than it takes to do a shorts video. And as you've seen from the numbers, they bring in about the same revenue. So that's it for this analytics update video. I'm not sure how frequently I'll produce these videos, but I'll try to do one now and then whenever I actually have something to say.